Hello, everyone. Welcome to watch the video produced by Creative Biolabs, who has extensive experience in therapeutic antibody and recombinant antibody production. In this video, we will give you a whole understanding to conventional antibody, recombinant antibody and their basic information and expression. There are four parts in this presentation. Antibody basics, structure, and function. Antibody production process in vivo. Recombinant antibody introduction and recombinant antibody production. We will introduce them to you in two videos. At first, let's begin to part one. Antibodies are large Y shaped proteins which are composed of two heavy chains and two light chains. They are recruited by the immune system to identify and neutralize foreign objects, like bacteria and viruses. Each antibody has a unique target known as the antigen present in the invading organism. This antigen is like a key, which helps the antibody in identifying the organism. Immunoglobulins are basically proteins that function as antibodies. The terms antibody and immunoglobulin are often used interchangeably. Antibodies are powerful research tools because they bind specifically to a unique epitope on the antigen, thereby allowing the detection of a specific protein in an assay, while avoiding detection of unrelated proteins. An epitope refers to the specific target against which an individual antibody binds. When an antibody binds to a protein, it isn't binding to the entire full-length protein. Instead, it is binding to A to a segment of. That protein is known as an epitope. The sequence of the heavy chain defines the class of Ig, such that gamma, alpha, mu, delta, and epsilon heavy chains define the immunoglobulins A, IgA, immunoglobulins D, IgD. Immunoglobulins E, IgE, immunoglobulins G, IgT, and immunoglobulins M, IgM, classes, respectively, each with a distinct role in the human adaptive immune system. The light chains are either kappa or lambda, isoforms for all classes. IgA concentrates in body fluids to guard the entrances of the body. Human IgA constitutes only 13%, 2.1 mg ml of the antibody in human serum, but it is the predominant class of antibody in extravascular secretions. They are monomeric form in blood. IgA1 is the most prevalent form in serum, but IgA2 is slightly more prevalent in secretions. Human IgE, 190 kD, makes up less than 0.003%, 0.4 mg ml, of the antibody in serum. IgE binds through its FC part to mouse cells or basophils. IgE protects against parasites by releasing mediators that attract eosinophils. IgG is the most thoroughly seen in all five isotypes and recombinant antibody engineering is based on it. IgG constitutes about 80%, 12.5 mg ml, of the antibody in serum. Human IgG consists of four subclasses, isotypes which are numbered in order of their serum concentrations, IgG1, IgG2, IgG3, and IgG4. The chief distinguishing characteristic among the four IgG subclasses is the pattern of interchain linkages in the hinge region. IgM, primarily induced by polysaccharide antigens, is a 950 kD pentamer that makes up about 8%, 1.25 mg ml, of the antibody in the serum. The five monomeric IgM molecules are arranged radially, the FAB fragments pointing outward and the FC fragments pointing to the center of the circle. IgM can quickly clump antigen and efficiently activate complement. IgM acts as one of the main receptors on the surface of mature B cells. Along with IgD, when IgM is a surface receptor, it is in its monomeric form. Unlike gamma and alpha chains, which have three C region domains, the mu chain has four. The five carbohydrate groups are in the CH1 and CH3 domains and in the part of the mu chain where the J chain binds. We explain the function of antibody. Here is a simple structure map of IgG. There are two domains in the IgG, variable domain, which contains antigen binding region, constant domain, which contains FC region, mainly mediate immune response, such as ADC, ADCC. When an antigen enters the body, the primary objective is to remove it or destroy it, which is done by our immune system, and mostly mediated with the help of binding of the antibody. The antibody should bind to the antigen specifically, 
but non-covalently so as to make a temporary immune complex and wait for the other effector immune cells to take action against that antigen. The interaction between an antibody and an antigen depends on four types of non-covalent forces. 1. Hydrogen bonds, in which hydrogen atom is shared between two electronegative atoms. 2. Ionic bonds between oppositely charged residues. 3. Hydrophobic interactions, in which water forces hydrophobic groups together. And, 4. Van der Waals interactions between the outer electron clouds of two or more atoms. The exquisite specificity of antigen antibody interactions has led to the development of a variety of immunologic assays. These assays can be used to detect the presence of either antibody or antigen and have played vital roles in diagnosing diseases, monitoring the level of the humoral immune response, and identifying molecules of biological or medical interest. The second part of the presentation is antibody production in vivo. In this part, we mainly focus on antibody diversity and antibody gene rearrangement. Antibody diversity is produced in B lymphocyte development state. So before we present gene rearrangement, we should learn about B cells development. B cells develop from hematopoietic stem cells, HSCs, that originate from bone marrow. HSCs first differentiate into multipotent progenitor, MPP, cells. Then common lymphoid progenitor, CLP, cells. From here, their development into B cells occurs in several stages, shown this image. The cells undergo DJ joining on the H chain chromosome to become early pro-B cells. Joining of a V-segment to the DJH completes the late pro-B cell stage. Pro-B cells become pre-B cells when they express membrane M chains with surrogate light chains in the pre-B receptor. Surrogate light chains resemble actual light chains, but are the same on every pre-B cell. Following proliferation, small pre-B cells, no longer dividing, undergo VJ joining on one L chain chromosome. Once L chain has been successfully synthesized, it is expressed with M chain on the cell membrane, and the cell is called an immature B cell. Immature B cells are very sensitive to antigen binding, so if they bind self antigen in the bone marrow, they die. B cells that do not bind self antigen express D chain and membrane igd with their IM about the time they leave the marrow and become mature naive. Resting B cells, B cell activation occurs in the secondary lymphoid organs, SLOs, such as the spleen and lymph nodes. After B cells mature in the bone marrow, they migrate through the blood to SLOs, which receive a constant supply of antigen through circulating lymph. Matcha B cell is activated by antigen stimulation and differentiates IgM secreting plasma cells. Each cellular clone synthesized in AGC produces isotypes of the same class specific for a given antigen. During the evolution of immune responses, there is a class switching in Ig classes, from IgM to IgG, IgA and IgE, and one fraction of the B cell progeny develop in memory B cells. The following antigen-independent steps in B cell development occur in the bone marrow, stem cell, heavy chain, IgH, and kappa and lambda light chain, IgK and IgL. Genes are in germline configuration. Early pro B cell, IgH undergoes D and J gene rearrangement, with loss of DNA between the joined D and J segments. Late pro B cell, IgH undergoes V and DJ rearrangement, DDJ rearrangement, with loss of DNA between the joined V and D segments. Small pre B cell, V and J rearrangement of light chain genes. Kappa Oppa chain is rearranged first. Then if rearrangement of both kappa oppa alleles is unsuccessful, lambda chain is rearranged. Large pre-B cell, intracellular expression and transient surface expression of M chain, with invariant pseudo light chain, pre-B cell receptor. The following antigen-dependent steps in B cell development take place in the periphery. Immature B cell, IgM surface expression. In the most common scenario, AVDJ segment joins first, with C mu genes, and subsequently with C gamma, C epsilon, C alpha genes, with synthesis of a complete H-IM chain, etc., without an associated L chain. 
surface expression is not possible and only cytoplasmic mu is found, pre-B cells. Mature naive B cell. IgD and IgM expressed on cell surface. Made from alternatively spliced transcripts. Lymphoblast. Alternative splicing results in secreted IgM. Memory B cell. Isotype switch to IgG. Somatic hypermutation of IgH occurs in the germinal center of lymph nodes. Mutated Ig are selected for improved antigen binding in a process, termed affinity maturation. Early during B lymphocyte development, rearrangement of one of the D gene segments to one of the J segments takes place regulated by the recombinase activating genes RAG1 and RAG2. Subsequently, rearrangement of one of the V gene segments to the DJ segment occurs. The primary RNA transcript is being processed by splicing the VDJ segment to a constant region gene segment, C. Based on a different constant chain, mRNA is translated to different heavy chains forming antibodies various isotypes. Light chain gene rearrangement principle in the process is similar with that of heavy chain genes. There are no D genes in light chains. Kappa oppa chain is rearranged first. Then if rearrangement of both kappa oppa alleles is unsuccessful, lambda chain is rearranged. VDJ recombination proceeds via precise DNA cleavage initiated by the RAG proteins, RAG1 and RAG2, at short conserved signal sequences. Whatever their precise role, the coordinated expression in pre-B is essential for the rearrangement of Ig genes, but Ig activity is switched off in mature lymphocytes. Rearrangements are carefully orchestrated, following the principle of allelic exclusion. That is, in each B cell is transcribed the gene product of only one of each chromosome pair. The gene located on the second chromosome typically is not used to prevent contemporary synthesis of H chains with differing V domains in any given cell. It is an allele, a term designating two genes or two or more alternate forms of a single gene occupying the same locus. The gene on the second chromosome is not rearranged unless a non-productive rearrangement occurs. When rearrangements are non-productive on both chromosomes, cell death ensues, thereby by clarifying why the same B lymphocytes within their entire lifespan can produce only a single type of L chain, kappa or lambda. IgV, D, and J gene segments are flanked by conserved recombination signal sequences, RSS, consisting of a heptamer and a nonimer separated by a non-conserved spacer of either 12 or 23 nucleotides. The 12 to 23 base pair rule first postulated to explain IG gene rearrangement. Virtually, during a rearrangement, a gene with a flanking sequence containing a 12 base pair spacer can only join to a gene whose flanking sequence is a 23 base pair spacer, and vice versa thereby elucidating the precise order of Ig gene transcriptions. Firstly, RAG1 recognizes RSS and form complex of RAG1 or RAG2, which cut single sequence of DNA, and then, a hairpin is formed by the addition of copies of the last nucleotides of the coding region, templated or P additions, or by random nucleotide additions, by the enzyme TDT, TDT, and additions. The joining of the coding ends of the rearranged gene segments is imprecise due to base additions, base losses and out-of-frame joining. This imprecision of joining generates junctional diversity. There is similar gene rearrangement mechanism in T-cells, T-lymphocytes. Hybridoma technology is a method for producing large numbers of monoclonal antibodies. The detailed process is not described here. If you are interested in the tech, Welcome to watch the video. Name development of monoclonal antibody, which created by Creative Biolabs. The production procedure can be seen in the right map. Here, we will introduce our hybridoma technology to produce high quality monoclonal antibodies. There are many advantages, for example, 1. Extensive experience. Over 100 hybridoma projects completed through the company history. 2. Multiple species hybridoma generation. We offer immunization and hybridoma generation from mice, rats, 
hamsters, and guinea pigs. 3. Antibody development against various targets. Successfully generated antibodies against protein, aptide, haptin, polysaccharide, bacteria, virus, membrane protein. 3. High immunization success rate. Facilitated by the magic adjuvant, the success rate of animal immunization is at 90%. 4. High screening capacity. Routinely screening for more than 500 clones to identify positive clones. 5. High positive clone rate. More than 10 positive clones, identified with top 3 positive clones delivered. 6. Comprehensive downstream process development options. Hybridoma sequencing. Antibody recombinant expression. Antibody humanization. Antibody modification. And engineering. In vitro or in vivo assay development. Alisa kit development. Antibody pair searching for sandwich Elsa. Antibody functional assay development. To offer you a comprehensive experience? In your lead antibody candidate discovery projects. If you have any questions about recombinant antibody, welcome to contact us at info at creativebiolabs.com or call us at 1 631 381 2994. See you in the next video.